Hello and welcome to the lecture series on monetary economics. In the previous class, I have talked about the problems associated with regional rural banks. In the segue of the same in today's class as well, in the second part of this lecture, I am talking about the problems associated with regional rural banks. So let's get started. The first problem is about credit worthiness of the consumers. So what is happening is heavy loans are given to them. They have poor credit worthiness or poor capacity to re repay the loans coupled with coupled with the verification process which is violated at times and as a result of this the credit worthiness of the consumer is not taken into consideration in the verification process and loans are given to them and these loans then later on create a problem or act as a hindrance for the regional rural banks. So this is a very big problem associated with regional rural banks that is credit worthiness of the consumers to whom the credit is being extended. So this is the first point of problems associated with regional rural banks and I hope that is pretty much clear. Let us now move to the next point which is talking about erosion of profitability. Now let us link the credit worthiness, the poor capacity of repayment options from the consumers and how they affect the profitability of, of the regional rural banks. So what is happening is the interest margin becomes really low because you are operating in a rural setup and you are giving loans to weaker sections of the society and these weaker sections of the society at times have poor credit policy or poor credit worthiness and as a result of that and as a result of that my interest margin is going down furthermore the weaker sections also do not contribute towards the deposits of the bank and as a result of that my capital is being constantly eroded and as a result of that my operational costs are also going up and I come across something called as erosion of my profitability because I have to make sure that I strike a balance between liquidity and profitability. When the deposits are not coming to me uh, at a very good rate, that means my liquidity is going down and the more the liquidity goes down, the more my chances of earning profit is going to go down because the interest margins are very low, I am operating at very high uh, costs and there is a chance of default of loans by poor credit uh, worthiness of the consumers associated. So therefore, these again, these two problems are or can be interlinked and are providing or are acting as as a hindrance to the growth of regional rural banks in rural India. So I hope these two points are pretty much clear. First is talking about credit worthiness. The second is talking about the erosion of profitability of the regional rural bank. Let us now move to the next point which is talking about faulty recruitment policy or defective recruitment policy. Now what is happening is that the recruitments were thought to be from the rural areas to which the banks are going to cater. But what happened is these banks gave the recruitment uh, chance or the chance of recruitment or the process they gave it or they handed that process over to the banking service board and what happens is banking service board is trying to take up people or staff from across the country and as a result of that we see that the people who belong to that particular region is not getting a fair chance and then again you have transfer policies and everything of that sort. So therefore what is happening is you are compromising on the very idea of providing employment to the rural population by setting up a regional rural bank because you said that the regional rural banks will provide employment opportunity to the skilled labor or skilled uh, force which is there in the rural parts of the country and as a result of this the entire idea or uh, the entire concept of regional rural bank as a matter of fact giving employment to the rural staff or rural populace is being is being compromised so this is how it acts as again a big problem towards towards the primary goals of setting up a regional rural bank to bring about prosperity in the rural parts of the country. So this is again a problem or defect towards the regional rural banks, a problem associated with the regional rural banks. So I hope the point is pretty much clear. Let us now move to the next point which is talking about poverty alleviation. Now the regional rural banks were supposed to uh, contribute towards something called as poverty alleviation for example by providing employment or providing cheap credit or providing other services to the rural populace for example providing credit base 
for starting up uh, say a small infrastructural plant or for for that matter any other agriculture and allied activity but unfortunately that has not happened significantly it must have done it but in a very small fashion which doesn't show any significant change in the poverty in in rural parts of the country therefore again this is again a problem associated with regional rural banks so i hope this point is pretty much clear the next point which is the last point is talking about the different government of india committees which also criticized regional rural banks and these three committees are first one is the datwala committee in 1978 then we have the vijay kelkar committee in 1986 then we have the khusro committee in 1989 now these three committees were set up for some different re- uh, reasons particularly but they in a sense talked about the position of regional rural banks in in some indirect sense and therefore let us look at what the datwala committee was primarily set up for the committee was set up for recommendation of block level planning that means there should be a sub state level planning setup which will be looking at the rural parts of the country or at the district level each district will have a set of planning in entities or institutions which will be looking at the planning of of the district levels and the levels below district meaning thereby at the rural or the grassroots levels so therefore in a sense regional rural banks were primarily looking at grassroots level or credit or provision of credit at the grassroots level therefore in a sense datwala committee was related to the same so this is again the datwala committee also criticized the idea or they said that regional rural banks are not performing on par with the idea which was envisaged while setting them up so this is one committee the second is kelkar committee which was again looking at public private partnership and therefore they also said that the regional rural banks are not working on par and therefore public private partnership meaning thereby <coughs> there should be a public entity there should be a private entity and they should come together and make sure that they provide different services for the, for example health care for example transportation for example credit so these are different ways in which you can probably study or review the idea or evaluate the idea of public private partnership in india and therefore for that purpose we had set up or the government of india under the planning commission had set up kelkar committee in 1986 so this is again another important thing which you should be understanding the next is the khusro committee which was set up in 1989 and that was primarily towards agricultural credit in india and to give a review about the same and they also criticized the presence of regional rural banks which were primarily looking at agricultural credit so these are different ways in which government of india also criticized the problems associated with the regional rural banks in india so i hope the idea is pretty much clear first i talked about the credit worthiness as a problem then i talked about erosion of profitability as a problem then i talked about the defective or faulty recruitment policy of reg- uh, re- uh, regional rural banks thereafter we moved towards the idea of poverty alleviation and how substantially it has not changed because of the presence of regional rural banks in the rural parts of the country and thereafter we talked about the three different committees which were set up for t- three different reasons and in a sense they felt that regional rural banks are not looking at or not taking the matter in that sense which it was supposed to take yeah so the very idea of regional rural banks were compromised according to these three committees but to what extent is not known because i am not going to talk about the same you can probably go and check that as well to what extent these committees think that the idea of regional rural banks must have been compromised so i hope the idea of all, all, all the points of problems associated with regional rural banks is pretty much clear in the previous class i talked about seven different problems in today's class again i'm talking about five different problems so you have uh, a plethora of problems which are associated with regional rural banks in the next lecture i'll be talking about what can be the possible solutions for tackling these problems associated with regional rural banks because if there arises a problem there has to be an alternative solution to overcome that problem and therefore in the next class we will be talking about the different ways in which you can provide solutions for these problems which are associated with the regional rural banks in the indian context so i hope the idea is pretty much clear please stay tuned thank you